I never imagined this day would come. It started out as an innocent curiosity, but things spiraled out of control faster than I could have ever anticipated. It was a quiet afternoon, and my girlfriend, Emily, was out for the day. I had been left alone in the apartment, and as I walked past her dresser, I noticed her lingerie drawer slightly ajar. I don't know what came over me, but I felt a strong urge to see what it would feel like to wear her clothes. I had always been curious about it, just to see what it was like, nothing more. So, without much thought, I slipped into her white lingerie, feeling a strange mix of excitement and guilt. It was only supposed to be for a minute, just to satisfy my curiosity, but as I stood there in front of the mirror, adjusting the straps and taking in my reflection, I heard the door creak open. My heart dropped, Emily was standing there, her eyes wide with shock, and I could feel my face turning crimson. I wanted to say something, to explain, but no words came out. The silence in the room was deafening until she finally spoke. What, what are you doing? She asked, her voice laced with confusion and a hint of anger. I stammered, trying to find an excuse, but she cut me off, holding up her hand. You know, I could call your mother and tell her about this, she said, her tone suddenly turning cold and calculating. My stomach twisted into knots. The thought of my mother finding out about this was too much to bear. I quickly shook my head, pleading with her not to do it. Please, Emily, I begged, my voice barely a whisper. Don't tell her, I'll do anything. She looked at me for a moment, a smirk slowly forming on her lips. Anything, she repeated, and I nodded frantically, desperate to avoid the impending disaster. All right then, she said, her smile growing wider. If you want me to keep this a secret, you're going to have to do exactly as I say. First, you need to get out of that lingerie. I nodded, relieved that she was willing to make a deal, but then she pointed to the closet. Pick out a dress, she ordered. I hesitated for a moment, confused. A dress? But why? Did I stutter? She snapped, cutting me off. If you want me to keep this between us, you'll do what I say. Now, pick out a dress. Reluctantly, I walked over to her closet and pulled out a red dress. It was tight and form-fitting, something I had seen her wear on a night out before. I looked at her for approval, and she nodded, satisfied with my choice. Put it on, she said, crossing her arms over her chest. I obeyed, slipping out of the lingerie and into the dress. It felt strange, but I didn't dare complain. I knew I was in no position to negotiate. Not bad, Emily said, circling around me as she inspected my new outfit. But we're not done yet. You need a full makeover. Before I could protest, she grabbed her purse and dragged me out the door. We drove in silence to the salon, and when we arrived, I could feel the stares of the people around us. Emily walked in confidently, while I trailed behind her, feeling more embarrassed with each step. The salon was bustling with activity, but Emily marched straight to the receptionist and requested a full makeover for me. I could see the amusement in the stylist's eyes as they took in my awkward appearance. Let's get started, the stylist said, guiding me to a chair. As I sat there, wearing rollers in my hair, I couldn't help but notice the two women across from me whispering and giggling. Emily was sitting next to them, a satisfied smirk on her face as she watched my transformation. The makeover was thorough, hair, nails, makeup, the works. By the time they were done, I hardly recognized myself. I looked in the mirror, and a different person stared back at me, one that was uncomfortably feminine. Emily seemed pleased with the result. You look perfect, she said, taking my arm as we left the salon. As we walked down the street together, I felt a mix of emotions, humiliation, fear, but also a strange sense of relief that I had managed to keep this secret. I couldn't help but notice the attention we were getting, and it made me even more self-conscious. Emily, on the other hand, seemed to enjoy every moment of it. So, she said, turning to me with a mischievous grin, do you still think it was worth it? I didn't have an answer. All I knew was that I never wanted to find myself in this situation again. But for now, I was at her mercy, just hoping that she would keep her promise. As we left the salon, I thought the worst was over. My new look was drawing more attention than I ever wanted, but I consoled myself with the thought that soon I'd be home, and this ordeal would be over. Emily, however, had other plans. There's one more thing we need to do, she said, her voice laced with excitement. Before I could protest, she had pulled me into another room of the salon, one that was set up like a small photo studio. The room was brightly lit with soft lights and had a backdrop that screamed, fashion shoot. There were a few other girls already there, 
casually chatting and laughing. As soon as they saw me, their conversation stopped, and they turned to Emily with curious smiles. Is this the new model? One of them asked, looking me up and down. Yes, he is, Emily replied, grinning as she introduced me. This is my boyfriend, and today he's going to be our star. My face turned even redder than it already was. The reality of the situation was hitting me like a ton of bricks. Not only was I dressed head to toe as a woman, but now I was about to be the subject of a full-blown photo shoot. Emily positioned me in front of the camera, guiding me to sit in the salon chair like I was some kind of doll. I sat there awkwardly, trying to maintain some dignity, but it was hard when everyone was staring at me like I was an exhibit at the zoo. Smile for the camera, one of the girls cooed, as Emily picked up a camera from the table. I tried to smile, but it came out as more of a grimace. The girls giggled, which only made me feel more self-conscious. Oh, come on, Emily said, waving the camera in front of me. You need to look like you're enjoying this. Otherwise, it won't be convincing. I sighed, forcing a smile as she clicked away, taking shot after shot. The other girls started giving me tips on how to pose, which only added to my discomfort. They suggested I strike different poses, each more embarrassing than the last, tilting my head just so, crossing my legs daintily, and even playing with my hair. Every click of the camera felt like another nail in the coffin of my masculinity. I was trying my best to keep up, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being utterly humiliated. And yet, I had no choice but to go along with it. Emily had me wrapped around her finger, and I was too scared to push back. That's perfect, Emily exclaimed after what felt like an eternity. Just a few more, and we'll be done. I was hoping she meant it, but Emily had one last twist in store. After the solo shots, she insisted on group photos with the other girls. They gathered around me, some leaning in close, others standing behind me, all while wearing mischievous grins. I felt like I was being swallowed by the attention. Finally, after what seemed like hours, Emily set the camera down. That was amazing, babe, she said, kissing me on the cheek. You were a natural, I forced a smile, but inside I was burning with embarrassment. As the other girls dispersed, I stood there, unsure of what to do next. Emily walked over to me, and for a moment, I thought she might finally show some mercy. Instead, she pulled out her phone. You know, she said thoughtfully, I think these pictures would look great on social media. My heart skipped a beat. Emily, no, I said quickly, my voice trembling. You can't post those, please. She looked at me, considering my plea for a moment, then she smirked. Maybe, she said, if you promise to do everything I say for the next week. No complaints, no hesitation. I was trapped, there was no way I could let these photos get out. Okay, I whispered, defeated. I promise. Good, she replied, clearly pleased with herself. Then let's go, we still have some shopping to do. As we left the salon, I realized that this was far from over. Emily had found a new way to keep me under her thumb, and there was nothing I could do about it, except to follow her lead and hope for the best. And as we walked out into the world, her arm linked with mine, I knew that my life had just taken a turn I could never have expected.